In this video, we're going to have a look at how we react, or in other words, what we end up doing when we experience an unenjoyable emotion, like, say, anger, disappointment or embarrassment. Now, everyone feels unenjoyable emotions every now and then, but unfortunately, sometimes they can make us react in ways that make situations worse. So when we look at what happens when we experience an unenjoyable emotion, we can see that it's not just about something happening and then us just reacting, because we also have thoughts and feelings in response to whatever happened. And those thoughts and feelings can affect how we respond or what we end up doing. It can sometimes feel like we have absolutely no control over what we end up doing when we feel strong emotions, but actually we can have some control over what we end up doing, but it needs us to be a bit smart. If someone laughed at someone unkindly, the person who was laughed at is almost definitely not in control if they just hit the person that laughed. There's a chance that this would make the person stop laughing, although that's not guaranteed, but there could also be lots of other bad effects as a result of using violence. Another reaction could be that the person might simply call the person who laughed a nasty name, but this rarely sorts the situation out either. So how can we get good at reacting in ways that do not make any situation worse? Well, that's what this video is going to explore. Let's have a look at a situation, say, where a friend called us stupid, which would be a pretty mean thing to do. Let's consider what we might think, how we might feel, and what we might do in response to that situation. What might we think then? Well, we could think they're really horrible. Or we could think I will get them back. We could end up thinking they don't like me anymore. Or what did they do that for? We might also think I'm not stupid. Or even what's up with them? So you could think quite different thoughts about what happened and the different thoughts can affect how you end up feeling. So what might you end up feeling? Well, you might end up feeling angry, you could end up feeling hatred, or you could feel humiliated, shocked, or confused, or sad. So a friend calling you stupid could trigger a mix of emotions and possibly more than I've listed here. So what could you end up doing in response to your friend calling you stupid? In other words, how might you react? Well, you might use violence and hit them. You might end up calling them stupid back. You could say clearly, I am not stupid. You might ignore them. You could find an adult to tell. Or you could say, I feel angry and upset when people call me names. They're all quite different responses. So the same situation, in other words, a friend calling us stupid, can make us think different thoughts, it can trigger different emotions, and it can make us react in quite different ways. And we do actually have some control over how we react, even if sometimes it doesn't feel like it. And a good way to think of possible reactions is to imagine if somebody did actually call us stupid, what would we actually want to happen? Do you want to end up getting into trouble? Do you want revenge? Do you want your friend to feel as bad as he's made you feel? Do you want your friend to stop calling you names? Do you want your friend to understand that what he did was wrong so that he's less likely to do it again? Let's take these questions one at a time. Do you want to end up getting into trouble? Well, that's very unlikely but you almost certainly would if you use violence in response to someone calling you stupid. Do you want to get revenge? Well, although revenge seems like it would make us feel better, people who have studied revenge have shown that this can make us feel bad for longer than if we're able to just forgive and let it go. Do you want your friend to feel as bad as he's made you feel? Well, you could say that that's what revenge is actually about. But if you did something bad back to your friend, like called them a nasty name or hitting them, they would then feel angry towards you 
and things could continue to get nastier, but it's certainly unlikely to sort anything out. Do you want your friend to stop calling you names? Well, you probably do. And for them to do this, it might help if they understood how what they did made you feel. Do you want your friend to understand that what he did was wrong so that he's less likely to do it again? Well, if this is possible, this would be great and you will end up feeling better. You could try saying something like, I get upset when people call me names. This could help your friend understand how they affected you. They might even say sorry if you're lucky. This approach does not always work, but it's the response that is most likely to get everyone, not just you, feeling better again. And it will certainly help your friendship get better. So when we work out what we want to happen when an unenjoyable emotion has been triggered, it can sometimes help us work out the best way to respond. This is easier to do with emotions that don't arrive really quickly, of course, and it certainly takes some practice and some thinking about. So let's have a look at two different situations. And after I've described each situation, have a go at listing the thoughts and feelings you think you might have in response to what happened. And then after you've listed those, consider the different ways in which you think you could react and then think about which reaction could possibly be the best. You'll probably need to stop the video a few times to do this properly, to give you thinking time. Imagine you're sitting eating your lunch and suddenly, for no obvious reason, somebody deliberately pushes your lunch on the floor. List the different thoughts and feelings you could have if this happened. So in the same situation where somebody deliberately pushed your lunch on the floor, what are the different ways that you could react? Try listing as many as you can think of. And when you've got that list, think about those reactions. Which of those reactions might make the situation worse? And would any of them help the other person understand that what they did was wrong, so they might say sorry and not do it again? So let's look at another situation, which would be likely to trigger unenjoyable emotions in most of us. So imagine you put your hand up in class and said a really silly answer and everyone in the class laughed at you and you really weren't trying to be silly or funny at all and really wanted to get the answer right. List the different thoughts and feelings you could have if this happened. So for the same situation where you put your hand up in class and said a silly answer so that everybody laughed, how many different ways could you react? Write a list. And then when you've written your list, look at the list and consider which reactions will make the situation worse and which reactions will, in the end, make you feel better. Hopefully you can see that we can change how we feel about something by changing our thoughts about it. And this can also change how we end up reacting to whatever happened. And we can also see that some responses make a situation worse and others help to sort the situation out. Also, because emotions can be so strong and take over, noticing what we're thinking and what we're feeling in any situation can put a much needed gap between whatever it was that happened and how we react. And that gap can be the difference between a disastrous response and one that's actually quite helpful. But this is easier said than done and it does need some practice and some thinking about. So let's have a look at some of the things we can do to put that gap between what, what happened and how we react. So if something happens that triggers an unenjoyable emotion, try to remember to take a look at what you're thinking. Is it a helpful thought or is it making you feel worse? And if it's making you feel worse, can you find a more helpful way of thinking about the situation? And if someone else is involved in the situation, it can be helpful to think about this person. So you could think, what might be going on for them? Are they having a bad day? Did you do something earlier that might have annoyed or upset them? Or are they someone who really struggles to get things right a lot of the time? In a situation where an unenjoyable emotion has been triggered, you can also get used to looking at what you're feeling 
and considering where you're feeling it in your body. Just recognising that a strong emotion has arrived can cause you to focus on yourself rather than anyone else involved and this can often stop you from doing something that makes the situation worse. There are other things that we can do to create a time gap between something unpleasant happening and us responding. The following list of things is especially good for strong emotions that arrive really quickly. So you can simply take deep breaths. You can count to 10 or count down from 10. You can take yourself away from the situation if that's possible. Or you can simply go and find a friend to sit with or be with. So creating a gap between what happened and how we react when we're in the grips of powerful emotions like anger, embarrassment, shame, upset or disappointment can mean we have more control over how we react or respond. This can mean you're less likely to make things worse for yourself. You're more likely to be able to forgive the other person and let whatever it was go. And sometimes you'll even be able to help the other person realise that what they did was hurtful. So if you react in a clever way to something bad happening, even when unenjoyable emotions have been triggered, you will almost definitely feel better more quickly than if you react in an unhelpful way. So what have we learnt? Well, we've learnt that strong emotions can sometimes cause us to react in ways that make situations worse. We've learned that we can have control over our reactions when we're experiencing unenjoyable emotions. We've learned that getting good at reacting well when we're experiencing unenjoyable emotions takes a little bit of practice and some thinking about. And we've also learned that there's ways of putting a helpful gap between whatever happens and our reaction 